takes you through the process of making a scalable, production-ready DAP um, on Polygon. It's it's actually very, very simple. You use the exact same tools that you use on Ethereum, but uh, you know, you just switch an RPC here and there. Um, you know, point your point your front end and back end towards different things, um, and maybe you know, kind of switch around some token contracts addresses here and there. But that's literally it. Um, so I wanted to show you kind of like the jo- general gist of uh, well, number one, why you should build on Polygon, and number two, uh, how really how easy it is through the example of three DApps that are coming up after this little uh, spiel about uh, Polygon. So, uh, what exactly is Polygon? For those of you who aren't familiar, although I'm sure most of you um, most of you are, um, Polygon is essentially a uh, side chain built uh, on Ethereum. We provide uh, this scalability through um, these uh, plasma checkpoints. Um, essentially, we're a proof of stake chain, uh, and uh, because we have these like plasma che- uh, checkpoint nodes, what we can do with our uh, transactions is we can kind of batch them all together. Um, for confirmation on the Ethereum mainnet, uh, kind of, you know, all at the same time. So, uh, you know, because we have so many kind of like these checkpoint nodes, um, you know, this brings us kind of Ethereum level security, uh, because ultimately, like the finality of the transactions are settled on the Ethereum main chain. Um, it's all obviously decentralized uh, because we have many checkpoint nodes and uh, it's really blazing fast. And uh, on top of blazing fast, it's also each transaction is also super cheap. Um, recently, you might have heard, uh, for those of you who uh, pay attention to the crypto news, uh, that we have had a small kind of gas increase. That's not going to be a problem at all um, because, you know, each Matic token, like if you get one Matic, that's like already so much. Uh, and it's probably going to last you like half a year or something because like, you know, gas fees are so cheap. But um, essentially, that's just a security measure to prevent uh, essentially network spamming um, while still providing our users, uh, you know, that kind of scalability. Um, so, you know, uh, when did we start building this? We started building this in uh, 2017. Um, and this has been, yeah, like ever since I've started building on Ethereum, this has been kind of like, for me, at least a household name. Uh, so it's, it's quite an honor to present this to all of you. Um, and so kind of like, why do you really need like scalable dApps and what's the problem unless you know if you're not familiar um so if you're just getting started on developing on ethereum um just getting started writing our smart contracts you might uh just kind of deploy on rinkaby or um covan whatever test network you like but if you're going to move to mainnet um you might see a really obvious problem and that is gas fees are like super high um you know to the point where you probably need like you probably need like thirty or ten to thirty dollars just to send a transaction, and um, never mind like you know kind of Uniswap liquidity pool transactions, right? Like that's going to cost you like two hundred uh, two hundred bucks or something. Um, and obviously, there's also like uh, kind of periods of you know like really high uh, gas traffic, uh, which once again just uh, kind of all of this creates a really uh, kind of bad user experience, um, you know and each project requires different types of scaling uh, because obviously each uh, project has different needs. Um, and, you know, uh, there, there's different kinds of scaling solutions that must coexist. So, you know, whether that be like you're, you you want to do like a, like a DAP on a ZK rollup, um, you know, uh, just deploy on the POS chain um, or there is an enterprise chain for you. Uh, you know, there, there's kind of all of these things are encompassed within um, kind of the, the uh, polygon suite of solutions. Um, we also have uh, kind of, you know, uh, a lot of just different approaches to scaling. Um, and, you know, we want to really define ourselves as a scaling aggregator where you can like find essentially anything you need for your scaling, scaling needs. Um, so uh, as you can see here, we have like a whole suite of uh, solutions. That's what I was talking about earlier, the kind of scalability aggregator. That's what we are. Um, typically, you would, you know, the simplest to deploy, uh, deploy on and the most often that you'll see is the POS chain. Um, you know, and that's just like Matic mainnet slash, you know, uh, the Mumbai test network. But we also have uh, an SDK. We have a Vail. And most recently, uh, we uh, have uh, uh, Nightfall and Hermes. Hermes is something that I'm super hyped uh, for. And I'm actually producing content for right now. So, um, you know, as we shift to kind of like roll up centric Ethereum, um, you know, kind of maybe even after the merge, this will come in really, really handy. Um, 
And uh, of course, uh, you know, when I said earlier, you can really kind of like build on everything that you're used to in Ethereum, Ethereum world. Um, it's true. Uh, Polygon has like literally everything that you see on Ethereum, um, and we're super composable. Um, so you know, you can build on top of any of those things, and it'll just be like building on good old Ethereum. Um, you know, your imaginations will be the limits. Uh, so uh, kind of a little overview uh, of like the actual logistics. Uh, you're uh, kind of whenever you send a transaction, because finality is so fast, uh, because of kind of our proof of stake chain kind of architect uh, architecture, uh, you're going to see transactions go through very, very quickly. Um, transactions that would have taken you a minute uh, on Ethereum, uh, which they do, uh, typically take you around like five to 10 seconds on um, Polygon, as, as you will see later on when I show you my examples. Um, the average transaction costs have probably gone up a bit, but it is still like within the less than a cent range, um, you know, less than 0.01 Matic typically. So uh, you don't need to worry about that unless, you know, if you're using kind of like probably more complex um, kind of smart contracts, like maybe like contract, you know, smart contracts, like, um, you know, price oracles or stuff like that, then, you know, you might have a higher transaction cost. But it's still less than, you know, 0.1 Matic, um, for sure. Uh, so, you know, of course, we have we inherit in Ethereum style, uh, you know, kind of composability and security. Uh, and we have just a lot of people developing in this ecosystem. Uh, so, you know, kind of the default uh, for uh, your uh, rescaling need, essentially. Um, of course, there's a lot of TVL here, too. So if you, uh, you know, if you're a DeFi degen and you like good, a lot of liquidity in your network, uh, here it is. So, uh, you know, our team uh, is, you know, there's there's a lot of people on our server active. And if you ever want support, you know, you should definitely come on our Discord server. Uh, you know, uh, you, you know, th there's quite a lot of, you know, blog posts here and there on, um, you know, integrations with various uh, chain link things as well. Uh, we I mean, as you know, as I said previously about how you're essentially just building on Ethereum, but on Polygon, uh, we essentially have like every single like thing that you can really think of on Chainlink, but just on like Polygon. You know, you still have access to price oracles, uh, VRF, you know, all the all the you know typical cool jazz um, that you like. But anyways. Um, Back to the point, we have uh, kind of a very active community, and uh, all of these people are like, um, you know, either on the core team or advisors are uh, people that I personally actually, personally actually look up to uh, when I first started. Um, so uh, you know, uh, they're they're all really awesome people, and uh, yeah, you know, um, pretty, it's quite an honor I'm working with them right now. Um, so with the Polygon uh, ecosystem, uh, you have quite a lot of DApps to build off of, as uh, I said earlier. But uh, most notably, because we're at the Chainlink Hackathon, Chainlink, uh, you could definitely build on it. Um, you know, uh, you can, like, literally right here, uh, if you want uh, to build, like, a dApp off of the VRF, um, which, uh, one, I'm going to show you, like, kind of later, um, then uh, here is the Polygon uh, Matic testnet or Matic mainnet uh, kind of, I uh, kind of, uh, like, contract slash token IDs. Um, so all you need to do is just, uh, import these into kind of like the right place. Um, you know, and of, of course, Chainlink being Chainlink, uh, you know, and big shout out to Patrick and all the, uh, other, uh, you know, like kind of content producers over there. Uh, you know, you, you, y'all have really, really great docs. So, um, I'm not going to doubt your ability to access that. Um, but, uh, you know, there's also, uh, quite a lot of other things, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, Polygon Matic data feeds, right? If you uh, are building a DeFi app, um, and uh, you know you're looking for, uh, you know, just kind of price data, um, or yeah, you know, just just price data and all that stuff, um, you know, here's literally a whole list of um, a lot of the uh, proxies and um, kind of data feed links that you will um, also import to the right place, uh, you know, when when it's when it's given. So. Um, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty extensive, uh, the amount of resources that we have to support you. And, uh, all we want to do is just make sure that you can develop however you want on the network. Um, we support, uh, Solidity, JavaScript, uh, of course, like React, um, you know, uh, Truffle, Ganache, like the, the good old, good old Truffle and Ganache. And, um, of course we also have, uh, support for Hardhat. Um, so, 
Um, that's that's really really good. Um, also, let me just I'm just gonna close out my Telegram real quick. Uh, but uh, we also have yeah, so we have all these all these really really cool things. Um, you know, kind of essentially everything that you would use on you know just mainnet Ethereum. Uh, and if you want to bridge over your assets or bridge over your NFTs, tokens, um, etc., we have uh, a, a Polygon bridge. So we have an NFT bridge. Uh, yep. So here it is, uh, and we have a token bridge. Uh, so if you just like search up token bridge Polygon, uh, I'm sure you can like find it right here. So you have like a, you know, you, you have the wallet, you have the bridge, and it's all that stuff. Uh, it's it's really great. Um, so cool. Uh, thanks a ton. Uh, that that's kind of like the the general spiel of like what Polygon is. I'm gonna show you a few. Um, first of all, a few developer resources, and then we're gonna get into get right into the examples. Um, so if you want to get started, uh, there's kind of like uh, two main places that I I would go to. Um, you know, really re the really really simple um examples and uh they definitely work one of these uh examples and actually both of these examples uh, uh you know I'm, I'm actively contributing to as well so let me know if you have any questions um but uh essentially you can have um you know also my telegram didn't shut off oh man uh there we go sorry uh Anywho, uh, we can have essentially uh, quite a lot of uh, kind of example dApps here for you in uh, github.com slash polygon dash academy. Um, this is like uh, kind of a starter place for you if you want to build your DeFi dApps, uh, you know, just build any dApp on Polygon. Um, you know, these, a lot of these, uh, some of these are, so most of these I think are on uh, Truffle slash Ganache. If you're, you know, if you're, you know, like like that, you know, and you, you, like, you like that kind of, uh, you know, developer suite. Um, I personally, uh, I'm a big Scaffold ETH fan. Uh, you know, shout out to the Build Guild. Um, and uh, I personally also work a lot more on Scaffold ETH. So um, I, you know, I'm always a big uh, supporter for Scaffold ETH. And I, I always, I kind of uh, use this like low key, low key. All right, don't tell anyone, but I low key use this a little bit more. Um, but you can see here, they have quite a lot of uh, chain link uh, things. Uh, that you can very, very easily implement onto uh, Matic. So I know that there's like, you know, both separate chains, but hang with me. We're going to show you um, essentially how you can turn any of that into just like essentially the same thing um, in kind of just one really simple move. Um, what we're going to start off with is the very, very like most simple example, right? Um, you know, kind of how do you take a um, just very basic like NFT tutorial um, and then turn that into like deployed on on Matic slash Mumbai. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up multiple terminal windows here because uh, I'm going to need that. Uh, I'm going to do CD into this Matic NFT tutorial. And what's so good about, uh, you know, Austin's uh, Scaffold E3 repo is you can literally just do yarn chain uh, and hard hat will kind of essentially just boot up like a local blockchain for you to uh, develop on, uh, explore with, etc. Um, it's very, very convenient. It's very useful, um, you know. And uh, oh, I mean, it's, it's mandatory. You know, you kind of need it. But um, yeah, that's kind of the the step one there. So that's that's booted up. I'm just going to minimize that tab. Um, and I'm going to show you first uh, this part. So uh, essentially. Uh, if you if you're working on the same thing that I am, uh, your hardhat.config.js will have a um, default network. So you know you, you kind of whatever uh, you know you, you can set that kind of variable right here as well under module.exports. Uh, and the module.exports will be this kind of like the common denominating factor amongst essentially everyone's you know everyone's uh, hardhat deploy script um, or you know config script. Uh, so. Uh, you know, uh, you would you, you would set this to to whatever network you want under uh, networks. You would set that to the name of the network, um, and you can see right here that I set uh, my network to Mumbai, quote unquote. Um, and under Mumbai, I have uh, some various kind of uh, things that I need to deploy on Mumbai. Um, that is, first of all, my RPC URL. Um, essentially, that's like um, 
you know, someone else is running like a node service and uh, it's like kind of like your window into the blockchain. Um, and uh, through this, you can kind of, you know, deploy, uh, you know, deploy your smart contracts, uh, mint stuff, et cetera. Um, you'll sometimes, I think you'll need to set a, like kind of um, uh, set your gas price or, you know, set your gas, gas fee price. Um, otherwise, I think it might give you some sort of weird er error that said like you need to set your gas price. Um, but yeah, uh, I always do this just to make sure. And of course, you have your uh, account mnemonic, uh, which is under mnemonics.tsc, uh, which I'm not going to spoil uh, because that's not good. Uh, so, okay, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a CD into the Matic NFT tutorial. Um, and by the way, uh, for, for all of you first timers out there, uh, we have a like kind of step-by-step -step guide on how you deploy an NFT. Um, on Polygon, uh, kind of similar procedure would go for like any DeFi dApp. Um, you know, you would just essentially grab, you know, grab this little chunk right here. Like, uh, kind of how do you connect to the, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, the the Matic and Mumbai uh, networks, and then you would just, you know, put that into hard uh, hardhat.config. You would also change your uh, front end to point towards networks Mumbai. Um, and then, you know, you would, you would just, you would just do that. Um, and, you know, like, of course your personal kind of, uh, for more, those of you who are more developed, uh, kind of experienced out there, um, you know, you know exactly what this is and, you know, obviously your things are going to be a little bit more different, but that's all you need to do, uh, you know, like, uh, to, to, to deploy your stuff on Polygon. <clears throat> so, um, but for those of you who are first timers out there, uh, be sure to do the Git checkout. Uh, for whatever branch you're working on, and most importantly, do yarn install, um, which will just install everything, uh, all of the magical boilerplate code um, that was set up in advance, and uh, you know that will support you on your developer journey. So then now, uh, with a little bit more yarn start, we're going to first boot up our front end. That's going to take a small while. Um, so we're going to just uh, wait for that. But while I wait, I'm going to kind of go over the uh, contract very quickly here. Um, so obviously, we start off with the Pragma Solidity that specifies like the Solidity version. Um, right now, I think we're on like like Solidity 0.9. Uh, so this is kind of a little bit slightly up to, uh, outdated. Um, but you know, uh, this is I think this is fine if you use like a like a slightly outdated version of Solidity in the past. Um, you can also uh, have um, so you just also import like your open Zeppelin uh, contracts for your various uh, you know token standards uh, and, and you know th this is something that you can definitely check out in your own time. It's just under it literally just search up like open Zeppelin uh, token standards on um, you know on GitHub or you know honestly just even just even copy this. This is all already going to be there, so um, not a big concern. Uh, your contract uh, contract name uh, inherit the. Uh, in inheriting is like essentially you're saying that all the properties of this contract like applies to this contract. Um, so you know you inherit the ERC seven twenty one standard. Uh, you inherit the ownable standard, um, and you kind of uh, start your uh, token counters. Uh, so um, and so you, you, this is how you set up your little uh, token IDs, um, and uh, this this constructor only runs once. Uh, so when you deploy your um, you know, your uh, smart contract, the constructor runs once, uh, sets up your ERC721 token as like a, a collectible. Uh, this is the kind of ticker mark for that. Um, and uh, this is kind of like a, like a, this is set, essentially just setting your URI um, over to uh, IPFS. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is your, your, your mint stuff function. Uh, you know, uh, you mint, the things to you know to an address um and you can only call this if you're the owner and uh some essentially some of this is just like um you know uh you know you in, you increment the token id for every single nft that you mint so you know you have like nft1 nft2 nft3 like for every nft that you mint um and uh why do we need to pass in this too because we have a little mint script that says, uh, you know, we are going to mint to this two address um, with a yarn mint, which I will run right now. 
CD, uh, Matic, NFT tutorial, and then Yarn Mint. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention, all of this requires gas fees. Um, so even though the gas fees are uh, like really low, they're not zero, right? Uh, so we need to go to Polygon uh, Faucet, faucet.polygon technology. Um, you also probably need some, uh, you know, if you're uh, chain link faucet, um, you know, obviously, you know, we're in the Chainlink Hackathon, so I'm sure y'all are going to be using some very cool uh, tech from uh, Chainlink. Uh, so, you know, of course, you're going to need some link for that. Um, so you have quite a lot of the uh, the good old, uh, you know, networks to choose from. You choose from Arbitrum uh, all to Rinkaby, and, you know, here's the here's the uh, Matic Testnet um, network. Uh, so you can just click the reCAPTCHA um, and then, uh, you know, uh, what you would do then is, so, okay, so this minted uh, because I already have gas here, but what you would need to do is do a yarn generate. So enter in the yarn generate, it'll generate kind of like a burner wallet for you for this particular app, um, for like testing purposes, of course. And then you would do yarn account. Um, Yarn account essentially is like the gives you account information about your burner wallet uh, and how much tokens you have. So uh, on this example, I have uh, you know this is my small burner account, uh, and I have uh, you know I already sent you know my my Mumbai uh, to it, so I already have some Mumbai tokens. Uh, as you can see, I sent it like 0.08, and like I've been running this workshop for let's say like a, around a month. Um, it's it's been. You know, it's, it has not been used up at all. Uh, so this is very good. Um, so you know, you run your you run your yarn account. You paste your yarn account. Or sorry, yeah, you paste your account address here for your burner wallet. You click the no, I'm not a robot, and then you you get your uh, your test net test link. Um, you know, on your your uh, your you know uh, Mumbai link. Um, and uh, you can also come over here and get yourself some Mumbai. Oh, I also just found out. Oh, this is new. They also added a uh, link to this uh, faucet, which is very cool. So now you can get a link from two places, I guess. Um, but yeah, you, you paste your wallet address in. Same same procedure. You get your you get your uh, tokens. So uh, after you've gotten your uh, tokens to test out with, um, so I just did a little yarn mint, and now you can see uh, these cool NFTs pop up on my front end, um, and these are mine. Uh, so. Uh, you can see here kind of uh, the transaction history. Um, this contract essentially, or you know, I, I just minted these for myself. Um, and uh, you can also see a little bit more information about your NFTs kind of on the token debugging page, or sorry, the contract debugging page um, right here. So uh, you can do, let's see here. Let's see what we can do here. Um, so you can do like token URI, right? If you do a little like token ID, like 24, right? Uh, so where I got that 24 from, I got that from right here. So the very latest, very latest transfer transfers. So if we do uh, 24, right? Total supply 24. So if we do token number 24, oh boy, where'd it go? Sorry, folks. Here it is. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, Okay, here it is. Okay, cool. Um, so that gives you the token URI, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is kind of like just your token URI, um, and uh, yeah, cool. Um, so that's that's one really really easy example um, to kind of uh, recap that uh, before we go on to a little bit more complex examples. Um, the only difference between you deploying on mainnet Ethereum and deploying on mainnet Matic or testnet Mumbai is uh, just, you know, you just need to switch the RPC. And uh, now uh, in some cases, um, let, me, let me just show you here. In some cases, you'll just need to kind of switch up the uh, contracts for various things. For example, um, Chainlink's VRF coordinator, you'll need to switch out that contract for um, the contract address that's uh, deployed on um, Matic. Uh, so it's all really, really, really simple. So now I'm going to show you another uh, DAP that you can kind of uh, launch up um, that uses uh, kind of your your good old Chainlink VRF. Uh, everyone's heard of the Chainlink VRF, right? So uh, this should be pretty simple. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to exit out of that, uh, you know, and we're going to exit out of this, boot up two new terminals. Uh, we're going to do a little, um, and uh, if, if you want to like kind of follow along as well, uh, instructions are uh, kind of to kind of boot up are here. There's even a video. I think I'm going to just, I'm going to up, uh, update the, I was actually planning on updating the readme like this afternoon, but it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get that done later. But uh, anyways, back to the point. Um, so let's see here. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a uh, CD into your fire and a T. Um, and then we're going to do a little thing called um, yarn account, uh, yarn generating a yarn account. But I already have a yarn account on here. So we're just going to check to see if I have enough uh, gas to deploy. Come on, middle rolls, middle rolls. It's gonna keep roll. It's gonna keep loading. There we go. All right, good. All right, we have uh, we have some Mumbai, uh, which is good. Um, man, I should really add a thing here. That's this has uh, you know, kind of how how much link you have, but um. If we don't have enough link, we'll see an error message pop up, and then we can go back, get the link anyways. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do yarn deploy. So uh, you can see, first of all, you can see kind of all of these uh, IPFS and then hashed uh, what we essentially just did was uh, we had already a lot of, and let me just show you here, close out a few windows, show you this. So um, what we have is uh, already a lot of like, you know, kind of um, NFTs already kind of that are, that are ready for deployment. Um, and then we just essentially, what we did was we, we just deployed them onto IPFS. Let me just see where the, yeah, so uh, this is to upload all of your NFTs. Oh, yeah, so uh, what you would actually do before that is you would do yarn upload. So yarn upload would run run this little thing, um, and uh, this would... Uh, hey, just uh, just real quick, just jumping in. Um, it's super uh, super zoomed out. Can you, uh, can, you, can you zoom in a little bit? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, sure. Is this yeah, better? Yeah, that looks better. Comments, how, how's that look? Let, let, let me let me let us know how that looks. Yep, exactly. Uh, yes, uh, sorry everyone, and uh, be sure to let me know if something is, uh, you know, not particularly visible. And let me just try to like full screen this, and then maybe it's a little bit better. <clears throat> um, so, uh, you know, uh, this is what you would, um, you know, so this is already written for you in Scaffold ETH, um, and this is like for first time developers, um, this is definitely a little bit complicated. I know that you know I personally struggled with this section uh, when I first started, to, uh, you know, kind of developing on um, scaffold ETH slash just Ethereum in general. Um, but uh, you know, uh, essentially, what this is just saying is like uh, upload all of the uh, artwork dot uh, kind of like you know assets in up, uh, artwork dot JSON. Um, artwork dot JSON is a JSON file that contains all of your uh, kind of all the metadata about your um, NFTs that are that want to be uploaded onto IPFS. Um, so right, and you can you can you know essentially uh, replace any of the artwork uh, artworks and artwork JSON with uh, any of your own personal artwork to bend your own personal NFTs. Um, so there's that. Um, so then we did we we did a little yarn upload, uh, just kind of we we Martha Stewarted it a little bit, uh, you know, off screen, off cam, uh, but we now we, we you know we just did yarn deploy. So uh, now we're gonna do yarn start again. Oh, goes. Yarn start again. I try to also full screen this and zoom in here so y'all can see this hopefully. Um, so uh, you know we just did a little yarn start, and what that did was essentially uh, you know kind of open up our front end again. Let's wait for this thing to start up.
And while this thing is starting up, uh, we'll go through the usual drill of kind of going over our smart contracts. Um, so same same things as usual up here. Uh, you inherit, uh, you know, the uh, ERC-721. You also need to inherit the VRF consumer base uh, that you have uh, from Chainlink. Um, so what? How you how you got? How do you like kind of get that library to be in your, um, you know, your uh, uh, your no modules or whatever? Um, you just do a little simple uh, yarn add, copy this little section, um, chain link slash contract at chain link slash contracts, and it'll just it'll just pour things in. Um, specify the version that you want uh, for your uh, Solidity version. Uh, this branch was built using Solidity 0.6 to 0.7, so we're just going to use 0.6 for now. But uh, Chainlink has support for all the way up until 0.8, I think, um, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, and of course, you know, that's not correct. Feel free to jump in, Patrick. Um, but here we go. Uh, we, we So we first uh, kind of store... Um, so it was, and we, we kind of store these like very kind of basic things. Um, and these are uh, taken just straight from the VRF consumer based contract, key hash, the fee, uh, the fee being uh, the kind of like uh, fee that we need uh, to request randomness. Um, and then we have also a human 256 uh, that's publicly accessible, uh, representing our random result. Uh, random result is going to be used for uh, randomizing the stats on our NFT. Uh, this is also just normal stuff. Constructor, this runs once uh, when you first boot up the contract. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have, you know, it's, all, it's obviously public, but uh, you have your VRF consumer base. And right here is where you plug in the address for your VRF coordinator, which varies by uh, network. Uh, so, for example, excuse me, uh, these, uh, so this one and this one were um, the ones that were specifically for the uh, Mumbai test network. Uh, there is a different one for the mainnet. There is a different one for Covan. Um, so be sure that you're using the right one. Uh, otherwise, uh, I don't, you know, things might not work. Uh, and, you know, this is also normal stuff. Um, and so this little thing here depend, uh, kind of is a setter for um, whether if a thing is for sale or not. Um, so... Uh, it starts off uh, at uh, i equals zero, and um, you know, uh, essentially, uh, like, essentially, this increases by one once you like, you know, kind of click mint. And uh, you know, what this would essentially do is uh, set, you know, kind of your NFT to be, you know, kind of not not for minting anymore, uh, because essentially, like this entire. I hope this is loaded. Okay. So this is how the front end looks like. If you click mint here, uh, you'll mint an NFT, and then one person can own one copy of each NFT here at a time. So this essentially just sets it so then you can mint another NFT, uh, you know, after the initial person has already minted it. Um, key hash. Uh, this is just you know kind of uh, the key hash that you need, which also uh, kind of varies by the network. Uh, and so you can see here. Kind of looping back to the very beginning now. Um, oh boy, where did I? Where did it go? Uh, okay, I think you can. I, I'm sure you can like look this up on Google. So, um, so Mumbai um, chain link. Uh, I think this is here, yeah, right there. Oh, okay, there it was. Sorry, I just didn't, I didn't see that one. Um, so you can scroll down all the way over to Matic or Mumbai. Um, oh, I don't think this is it. I think this is just like the chains. Oh, whatever. It's okay. Um, I'm sure y'all will be able to find it via a Google search. Um, I th I'm sure it's like around here somewhere though. Oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. Okay, we're we're all good now. All right, wonderful. Um, we found it. We found it. Okay. Um, so this is your key hash, right? Uh, I just straight up copy and pasted these things from here. Uh, your fee will be 0 0.001 link or 0001 link, uh, which is specified here. So, uh, just in general, developing on Ethereum tips, um, you can. So when when it says fee is 0. 0.0001, it doesn't mean literally 0. 0.0001 because one ETH is uh, like one times ten to the eighteenth. Um, you know that's just how 
uh, Ethereum works. Um, yeah, and you know, uh, so you you know when when you do uh, this number times ten to the eighteenth, that's what represents the uh, you know point oh oh one link, um, because link is also like a you know it's it's an, it's another ERC twenty token, uh, you know it's it also has that eighteen decimal kind of kind of spiel to it. Um, so now we kind of map each uh, NFT to if it's for sale or not via a mapping. Um, you also map the, uh, you know, kind of each uh, NFT, you know, e- each item uh, to a UNT two fifty six. Um, so you know, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of you can look up the token by the URI. The URI being that like string of things that I just like um, extracted from. You know, like when I put in number one or number twenty four. Uh, number twenty four was what I put in earlier. That the little thing that I highlighted was, um, you know. Uh, the token URI, uh, and uh, this is the uh, randomized strength stat that belongs to every NFT. This is our little function for requesting a random number. This is also copy and pasteable from the Chainlink uh, docs. So, pass the Chainlink. Uh, this is also same thing. Um, and right here, uh, this is already included. But what you need to uh, kind of notice is um, we've set the token strength here um to uh a uint 8 um and this is essentially like what you want to be your token strength um you can modify this stat however you want for your various uh, various purposes um but you know this is this is this is the randomized uh like random results um modulo 100 plus 1 um so you know like it's like a one to i think it's a 1 to 100 kind of thing um yeah maybe um but anyways, uh, you set the random result back to zero, um, you know, afterwards. So then you can kind of like start the thing over. You can get another random uh, randomness thing um, from, uh, you know, uh, you, so you can get another randomness thing from the uh, get random number function. And uh, you can get, uh, yeah, so you can mint another uh, random NFT with random strength. And uh, the best thing about this is if someone wants to build a thing on top of your thing, um, you know, they can. So you might have seen like Loot DAO recently with like a lot of their kind of like composable and, you know, people building on top of each other's things to like kind of create a whole gaming ecosystem. Uh, This is possible. Um, Someone can literally build like another contract that like fights like two nfts and compares the strength and whoever is stronger wins or something like that um so yeah that, that's that's pretty interesting um so so right here we have our front end booted up now uh everything is working properly i'm sure so you can just press mint confirm local transaction sent i'm going to just give this a second to show you how quick matic transactions are There we go. All right, the transaction went through. Um, very, very quick. It was like ten seconds. Um, so uh, you know, this is owned by me now. So I own two NFTs, and if you come over here and you check out the token URI, so that you know that's token number one. That's that. Um, and then if I do, what's it called? Where did I where did I run my yarn? I'm sure I ran my yarn. Uh... Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna copy this little hash right here. Mm, nope, sorry. Got to We gotta make sure that the IPFS URI is the same as the hash. And then if you put it in here, oh, there was a little. I think there was a little space in front. Okay, there we go. That was awesome. Um, so now, so what? Sorry, what I just did was essentially uh, I put in token URI one, right? So token number one has the URI HTTPS whatever whatever, right? You uh, you kind of match this thing up with uh, what you deployed here. So the IPFS, um, you know, kind of uh, URI here because the front front part is kind of useless. Just tells you that it was like deployed on IPFS. Get the hash. So copy that and. Uh, you kind of stick that in here. Don't you know? Make, make sure you don't have the space in the front, and you get one back. So that's kind of provable. You know that that you know that one belongs to you. Now let's see. Let's hope that this doesn't fail. Um, 
okay, I'm I'm tipping. I get I'm getting it like internal JSON RPC error, which shouldn't happen. Um, it's not like this. This hasn't ever happened to me. Uh, you know, uh, kind of before. Um, and you know, when I tested this, this was working already. Uh, but let's try to fix this here. So, um, or it might just be like an RPC kind of thing. So let me just make sure that all of my, uh, if anyone in the chat has any suggestions as to a fix, uh, okay. Uh, okay. So sorry guys. Uh, just trying to try and check the chat log, see if anyone has any suggestions for that fix, but, um, if anyone, uh, so, you know, I'm just going to make sure to check my, uh, check my hard hat config, make sure that everything is, uh, is all good. Let's see here. Can you zoom in a little bit? Oh yeah, sure thing. Yep. All right. So I, I just scroll, scroll down over to the, uh, Mumbai and Polygon section. I'm using Matic Visual. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's just another, another, like, uh, RPC endpoint besides for Infura, um, and kind of like the main, the main, uh, you know, kind of popular ones that you see out there. Um, and I already have settled and kind of like set my gas price. Um, so it might just be that, like, I don't know, unless that anyone has any suggestions out there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this as like maybe like a fluke and uh you know i think that this will be resolved eventually um by like kind of like the rpc folks over there um but this you know this this you know kind of uh, sample dap already works um and you know you can uh you can for sure mint something um all you need to do is when well, kind of when the rpc is working properly again um or so i hope yeah internal json rpc error i'm going to i'm going to check this out later on but um call the random number uh mint the nft and then um, you know, you can plug in your, uh, you know, you can, you can kind of, uh, plug in like, uh, the, you know, the little hat. So, you know, the, the hash that I was uh, showing all of you earlier. So that matches up with your, uh, particular kind of NFT, uh, plug that in and it'll show you the, uh, um, the, uh, token URI. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the the token strength. Um, and of course, there's a lot of stuff that has to go into this to like make sure that things are production ready um, and, you know, kind of actually interactable with like normal people. Um, but this is kind of like, like a starting point for you. And I'm sure all of you will have fixes towards the RPC issue. Um, and I'm sure it's probably just temporary as well. So uh, we can move on here. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. And I do want to, I do want to, um, kind of uh, reserve some some time uh, for questions. Uh, so I'm gonna go over this thing real quick and then we can like, like hopefully in like five minutes or so, and then we can like take questions if, if there are any. All right, my terminal is not responding. This is great. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, cool, we're, we're all good. So, Right here, we are going to CD into the chain link feeds demo. And then, uh, so essentially what this is, is a uh, kind of like a basic starter contract for you if you want to implement, um, you know, price oracles with uh, Polygon. It's, it's, it's the exact same thing as everything we've been doing before. Um, you set your target network to, uh, to Mumbai. Um, and then you also set your, you know, hardhat.config over here to Mumbai as well. Um, and, you know, you plug in the RPC uh, right over here under module.exports. Uh, and of course, just make sure that you have your, your uh, you know, kind of smart contracts ready. Um, this imports from the Chainlink client uh, contract. Uh, and essentially, it's like an API consumer contract. Um, this particular one is on like uh, like Ethereum volume, essentially. Like, um, but there's also other ones. Like, I think there's like price oracles that you can implement. Um, and this is the one that we like did earlier. This is like the random number thing. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, oh, that, that's just a normal one. But anyways. Uh, this is essentially like it, it, like an oracle is essentially just like a like a really quick smart contract. Um, and once again, Chainlink has really really wonderful docs on uh, the Chainlink client, so be sure to use that. Um, but uh, you can do a little thing 
little bit of a yarn to pull here. Let's hope I have enough gas for this. This should work, unless I don't have enough gas. Okay, I did not have enough gas. Uh, this is this is what like what I was talking about earlier, the error that it might give you. Um, so I'm just gonna check my account real quick. Uh, point zero eight. Oh, by the way, another really useful tool, um, uh, to check if you have enough gas for a certain transaction, or if you want to just test out a random smart contract. Um, is using uh, you know uh, your your uh, your remix. So remix, uh, you know, uh, it has. So it, when when you when you do remix, it's going to tell you to like you know kind of confirm your transaction, whatever. And over there, you can kind of see like approximately how much gas you need. Um, I've already requested for uh, Mumbai uh, like gas today. Um, so I don't think it's going to give me another. But let me just check, let me just try. Oh, so. Polygon faucet. Paste this in. All right, while this is happening, um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, like, I, I want to be sure that uh, the kind of message today and all of the cool dApps that we were building um, kind of went through to all of you and you feel confident that you can like start building something um, and con start continue like it re re like iterating and diagnosing with um, some of our folks and some of the Chainlink folks as well. Um, so I want to see if anyone has any questions, um, comments. Oh, wow. There's so many comments here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I like to not see that. Um, sorry, folks. Oh my gosh. Uh, where do I start? Okay. Um, uh, uh, oh boy. Okay. Oh, I need to like, do I just stop sharing my screen? Hold on. I think I can stop, stop sharing my screen real quick. Um, Let's see here. Yes, gas is impacting more by state changes for sure. Uh, you have to set up the RP. So just for clarification, you have to set up the RPC for that network and the config to deploy on multiple chains. Yes. Um, so, uh, right, exactly. Each, and uh, sorry, let me just show you this. My bad. Um, I closed off my screen share earlier. Okay, so let's go over this a little bit quickly, just uh, right here. So under your module.exports, the module.exports exists on both uh, Truffle. Oh, oh, oh sorry. My bad. I keep <laughs> <Okay>. forgetting. <laughs> um, so module.exports. Um, this exists on both uh, Truffle and Hardhat. Um, and what it does is it lists kind of the networks um, you know, uh, and you know, kind of what node providers that you're using. Essentially, this is your little kind of like your windows to the blockchains, right? Um, you know, you, you just you have to set up each one for each, uh, you know, uh, network that you want to deploy on. Uh, Austin used a lot of like Infura ones uh, for like, you know, kind of just Ethereum based, you know, ones. So, you know, uh, you can get this on Infura. Infura also has support for Polygon. So you don't really have to use uh, Matic, Matic Vigil. There's a lot of like, you know, kind of RPC providers out there. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, if there's if they're giving you like an un, unset like gas error, just make sure to set your gas price. Sometimes, very rarely, um, if there is a chain ID error, um, you, all you'll need to do is just do like a little thing called chain ID, and then you do, I think for Mumbai, it was like A0001, um, uh, and then for Polygon, it's, uh, you know, 137. There we go. Um, so that's that's all you need to do, essentially, um, to deploy on multiple chains. Uh, uh, can we, you share my, oh, yes, yes, okay. Um, I want to, so... Uh, someone in the chat asked a very good question. Can you share your Sublime text extensions for uh, smart contract development? Yes. Um, 
So I want to show you two things, uh, two things in addition to my own. Um, so, sorry guys, give me one small second. I'm just going to share my screen again. Okay. Um, so in addition to my own, uh, Patrick actually has his, uh, you know, kind of like blockchain coding setup video as well. Uh, so if you use VS Code more, uh, you can definitely check out his. I personally use Sublime. Uh, I started with Sublime. Uh, he probably started with VS Code. Slight differences. It's okay, you know. Um, VS Code is definitely great. And, uh, you know, you can get a lot of really great extensions very easily. Um, yeah, but you, you can check out his video in, in, for VS Code. I just use kind of like the basic ones. So I, I have a... Um, so what I would do is I have package control, uh, install package. What I have is a like a code editor. So I have I think I have pretty. Uh, I already installed this, so this doesn't show up. But I have um, prettier or, or you know kind of like uh, code editors like this that makes things kind of like light up. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be extraordinarily difficult for you um, to see what you're building uh essentially I, I so funny story i actually started without a like uh code editor until like until I, I was like just on one of my scene calls with austin one time and austin was like yo did you know that there's a code editor for you um and i was like oh really i didn't know that um i genuinely didn't know that um and uh installing that made life a whole lot more easier so uh definitely install that um but besides for that uh i don't think i'm using much i'm just using like a good old uh Get a, you know, good old code highlighter for Solidity, JavaScript. Um, you know, you can also install it for other things like um, HTTPS and whatever. So, uh, or, or like, you know, CSS and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, HTML. Sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Going a little bit too fast here. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, let me see here. Sorry. Just going to scroll up into the chat logs. Classic dev problems. Yeah, I feel that. F in the chat. F in the chat for for sure. <laughs> uh, I need. I do. I do. Uh, you know that that does happen sometimes. But it's okay. It's okay. It'll. Uh, I think. I think. I'm very confident that it will sort itself out. And if it doesn't, um, hit me up. Hit me up at. Uh, oh boy, I don't know if I can like. Okay. Anyways. Uh, Heap number 6960. That's my Discord tag. Hit me up. DM me. Um, oh, you, you, know. you, put, you put it in the, the chat. You got to put it in the, the comments. Oh, shoot. How do I do that? Oh, my bad. I'm like unfamiliar with the All stream. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Thank I, you, I sir. There. Yep. There's also a, a Polygon support uh, channel in the Discord as well. That's very true. Um, you know, you can go to the Polygon support slash uh, sponsor channel uh, for any of your requests. And, um, you know, I'm, you know, personally, full disclosure, um, you know, there is a lot more people on the Polygon team that are a lot more uh, advanced than me. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of really big brained people that are going to be helping you out with uh, various issues. But if you have any issues, be sure to come to me, uh, you know, or just text anyone, you know, like I, I would love to help you out. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's what I do for, for, you know, kind of, kind of money to support my schoolwork anyways. So, <laughs> um, anyways, let's see here. Uh, so Lee doesn't have floating variables. Uh, you'll have to I think you might have to clarify a little bit on that, but if that's an issue, let me know. Um, do for loops increase the gas in a contract? Um, Hmm, I don't think so. Not to my knowledge. Um, just make sure it's not like infinitely going, because that's just gonna like burn out your stuff. Uh, but not not to my knowledge. Yeah. Okay. This is like this is like most of it. Oh, um, for the welcome track, folks, can we have a quick description of hard hat, yarn, and scaffold ETH? So, um, so first first of all, uh, yarn is one of the things that you'll need to install um you know just in general uh so there's kind of like the setup to your developer environment um you know there's uh you know yarn uh npm you know like node uh 
you also need to, uh, you know, kind of just install like various libraries. Um, but that's just kind of like the setup environment. Hard hat is another kind of like developing environment that you can have. Uh, so, you know, that's it, it, hard hat is essentially just like truffle, uh, truffle slash ganache. You can boot up your own local chain, um, deploy your contracts onto, uh, you know, like the main net, uh, or test net and, uh, yeah, kind of just get your production ready dApp going. Um, and scaffold ETH is just a combination of all of that, um, into one really, uh, easy to boot up, uh, kind of out of the box, uh, hackathon stack. So, uh, you know, you can definitely, you should definitely, uh, you know, if you want to, you can use, you scaffold ETH, or as I said earlier, one of the dApps here on, uh, sorry, let me just show you again. Uh, one of the dApps here on uh, Polygon Academy. Um, there's quite a lot of, once again, different scaffolds for you to use. Um, oh yeah, and one more thing. If you want to uh, serve your, uh, your dApp on a decentralized front end, um, I think you can use search. Um, if you use, if you do like yarn build, and then you, you do like I think it was yarn build and you use like um like yarn I, I forget the exact command so you'll have to like go read the well you, you know we'll have to scroll down somewhere here in the in the uh, readme to like find that out but uh you can host actually your front end on a decentralized front end through search okay are there any local uh are there any tools that estimates the gas of contract on polygon Yes. Um, so let me, oh man, what, what was it? Sorry. Uh, so I know that, um, just a little bit of context behind that question. Uh, I know that recently, uh, ETH gas just, you know, kind of terminated their services, which is very unfortunate. Um, but, uh, fortunately in this very wonderful blockchain world, there's uh, other tools out there for us to use. Um, so, uh, you can use block native. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure block native has, um, just like gas estimators for for everything, um, I I do believe uh, if you want to like, <laughs> okay, uh, you know, asking for the replay here, but you can definitely I think you can wind back to like earlier on the video, uh, you know, when this video gets posted on YouTube, Scaffold ETH I believe has its own like gas tracker, um, so I think you can also use that. A lot of options to go though. Um, once again, the uh, the thing that I just showed you is called uh, Block Native. Blocknative.com slash gas estimator. Um, gla- gas d- a dash estimator. But yeah, uh, that's 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 another thing. And uh, just as a general rule of thumb, someone said in the chat, uh, gas is impacted more with state changes. Uh, you know, like, yes. Uh, and kind of one thing that I wanted to point out is something like the Oracle uh, kind of contracts that I just showed you that I didn't have enough gas for, that's going to cost a, quite a, a substantial amount more of more gas than something like just uh, the simple NFT examples that I showed you. Um, but it's not going to be like sky high. You know I mean, it's it's literally just going to be, and I probably, um, you know, uh, might just need to like constrain my gas price limit a little bit there to fix that issue. But, um, you know, it, you, you can essentially just run everything with, mm-hmm like one one matic one matic like if you go on like coinbase or whatever that's literally like a dollar and 50 cents uh you know obviously that might be like you know different if you're coming in from like another country but um it's very cheap it's very very cheap um you know not unlike i guess mainnet ethereum where you have to like pay 200 bucks for for anything DeFi. very painful very painful um which is why we love we love l2s uh, once again, this is uh, these are forkable on Scaffold ETH and Poly- Polygon Academy. Uh, I think a Google search can bring you there. Um, hey Patrick, would you mind like posting the like posting the links here? Actually, uh, I just want to give everyone, everyone like a straight direct link yeah. to it. Oh, you can you can post them in the in the comment section too. I think, right? Or or no? Do you not see that? Yeah, it doesn't give me like a video. Uh, sorry, ah, like a small, it small window you... to, to do. Gotcha, that. gotcha. Okay. Yeah, well, we're coming up on the hour here. Um, do we have any more questions? Going once, going twice. All right, sounds good. Okay. Well, thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate all of you for tuning in to this wonderful, wonderful workshop. Um, you know, uh, appreciate y'all's attention, your patience, etc. 
Um, and appreciate y'all for bearing with me through the uh, various unexpected errors um, here and there. Um, you know, these, uh, you know, the exact things that I just showed you will be updated. Um, I think around this afternoon, or if I'm like heavy on schoolwork, maybe like on Monday, but, um, I want to thank all of you for coming and giving me your, giving me your uh, attention and thanks so much, Patrick for, and, and of course the entire Chainlink team for uh, hosting this really wonderful hackathon. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here and thanks everybody. Uh, we'll see you very soon. Talk to y'all soon. Later.